How I get inspired to do stuff is again, you know, it's uh, when I can help other people dream, I'll notice that a lot of times for me, I trick myself because what I'll do is the things that I know that would inspire me to do where I want to go are stuff that I procrastinate on. In the other words, though, if there was something I, I needed to do to help somebody else get where they want to go, then I'll drop everything and I'll get it knocked out. Welcome to episode 17 of the podcast, Unlimited Wisdom with Robert Hollis. I am Craig A. Jackman, along with Matthew Hollis, and we are so glad to have you with us. You know, today is going to be really cool. I am looking forward to this episode because the title is, Who Inspires You? Let that sink in <laughs> just a little bit. Okay, now let's get started. Matt, Robert, welcome. What a great hello, topic hello. For the day. Hey, Craig, I, I, it, it is a great, great topic. And I, I know one of the things that I was just sharing that, um, you know, I really understand that my, my entire life, I consistently, consistently on a day to day basis, I'm always looking for humans doing above or above ordinary things. It is just who I am. And when I think about it, it's like, you know, recently there was um, NBA, you know, had the playoffs. And, you know, I, I only reason that I was watching the playoffs is because everybody was making a big deal out of this Luca, you know, guy that works for, you know, that plays for Dallas. It's funny. I, I was going to say works for Dallas and he does. You guys ever think about that? He, he, he's an employee, he's yeah. an employee just like anybody else. But but everybody, everybody was really inspired by him because he's just doing things. He's very, very, very young, but he's doing things that other people are not doing. Just to give you a neat example, in his first few years of being an NBA uh, new player, every record that Michael Jordan had in his first years of being a basketball player, this kid's already broken. So I'm going like, That's crazy. man, if, 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 if this guy is this good, I want to watch a few of the games, right? And he is that good. Do you guys realize that for the first time in the history of NBA, the person that lost the, the best basketball player in the whole entire playoff series of all the games was this kid. Now, his, his first name is Luca uh, Medevich. I, 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 I'm, I know I'm saying his name weird. So even though they lost and the Celtics won, to think that this kid still outscored every player. <laughs> Luka Doncic? There you think. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I, and, I looked and, it up and I'm like, I'll let Craig pronounce this one. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> if you really watch some interviews and stuff with him, he, he's very lighthearted. He, he's always having fun. Uh, and he's just constantly doing shots that everybody goes, how in the hell did he do that? So they were double teaming him and triple teaming him. And he was still getting 30 points a game. So, but in the midst of watching this, I got inspired by the other two guys. So uh, Julian Brown uh, and then Jalen um, uh, Jason, they spell it J-A-Y-S-O-N. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Tatum, right? And so I haven't watched basketball in years, so I don't know these kids. But, you know, here they've been together. You know, Boston uh, Celtics haven't won in 16 years. They got 17 banners hanging in the air. The last time they won, I think, was 16 years ago. And I they think I remember it, to be honest. They, yeah, yeah, and they it was beat huge. the Lakers. Huge deal when they beat the yeah, Lakers. Yeah, beat like the Lakers, so the Lakers was in it. And so... Here these kids are. They've been with the Celtics for nine years. They played in 107 playoff games together, these two guys. And twice they were played in the world finals and they lost. So now I'm all of a sudden expired because these kids are going, you couldn't be playing for a better franchise. I'm blessed to be playing here. Uh, done very, very well, just always just barely missing it. And mm. so 
for them to come up against this Luca that's going to bury them. And, <laughs> and uh, it was fun watching these guys. And what the story was uh, an inspiration from these two is, um, you know, that classic thing that everybody likes to see where they played together as a team. They knew. So the difference was, is they're going like, they're not great players, but wait a minute, you got six players on your team and a couple of people off the bench that each scored 10 to 15 points. It was, it was great to watch. And I so bet. yeah, <laughs> they were saying another thing that was crazy is that, you know, the, the two players that played together, um, Brown and, and, uh, Tatum, uh, you know, it's, it's like, they wasn't that great of players. So the Dallas never, ever thought about, we needed to de double team either one of these guys. And so to think that that Tatum that, that went through, he, um, he didn't have a spectacular, like he had one good game, you know, out of the four and a good game was not like 21 points, not 30 points, but hearing their story and how much they believed in each other. And they just kept saying all the time, well, how are you going to stop this guy? And they go, the goal is not to stop him. He's going to make the points anyway. We're just going to work at a team and all of us are just going to score more than them. <laughs> and I just went, that's the goal, right? <laughs> oh my God. You know, how, how simple is this? But it's the I got on that, Craig, when you said that is when people say who inspires you, it's consistently me looking for average people, ordinary people that want to be above average. And mm -hmm. so when you, you just hear these things, I, I brought it up on another podcast where, you know, John force, I 75 or 78 years old. And they had this big competition against all the funny cars. And he goes out and wins it. <laughs> I think it was his 180th win. Oh at the God. age of 75. And and so me, I'm always inspired. I'm always inspired by people that that do the little things, the mundane things that uh, I we never really talked on a story. I always love bringing it up on the imaginators um, or the our, 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 our inner circle. But this kid that, you know, just recently won the spelling bee. You know what I mean? And they showed really short clips of them because what they did is they came up with a new thing for a uh, a tie. So I guess it was like a, a year ago or so, the, the two that won had to share the award. And so they just, but this kid finished like 109th. I mean, it was like he wasn't Ooh. even in the two. So they wow. made new rules to say, listen, if it becomes a tie, it was how many words that you could spell in, in, a, in a time situation. So you can Google it. And the words that I've never heard that they were spitting to this kid. And he was like, brr, 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 and never missed any of them. Really? Right. So not only wins $50,000, but because there's this new tiebreaker, he gets it all to himself. But it just showed that, you know, that one year he, he didn't place and he was really, really upset. Uh, back that up with the next year, didn't play, so didn't get on stage of the 40 or whatever they pick. And then he finally placed in the top uh, 109 or something like that. The next year after that, he was in the 70s. You know what I mean? So whatever he did at least got him seen on TV. And then he wins the whole damn thing. And I'm like going, see, someone like that, I'm just thinking – constantly i'm looking for people all over the world that are just doing the things that others won't do that's it they're so inspiring because they're willing to do it for a little longer they're willing to look at it more long term i seen a, a graphic today on facebook and and it showed this guy trying to get out of a jail cell and there was a loaf of bread and then a key to the jail cell. And he was going for the piece of bread. Mm -hmm. And and that to me is the majority of the people on the planet that will either watch this, you know, watch this podcast recorded, is that 
all I'm looking for are people that are saying, you know, give me a shot. I'm willing to do the little things. And, and so I just wanted to share with you guys starting out that virtually anyone from doing anything from skipping rocks to sharpening pencils, uh, you know, stacking plastic cups, I, I, you know, and all these things, I just love these stories over and over and over and over again of people that are willing to do the little tiny things that everyone can do. They're just willing to do them consistently and disciplined to keep getting a little better each and every day. It's all about oh. mastering the mundane that you keep saying, Robert, and doing the basics, you know, and everybody's got to, okay. And, and I, I still have to remind myself sometimes, you know, Lord, I grant, Lord grant me the patience, but I want it now. <laughs> and, you know, and I used to say that all the time. Right. And now I've gotten to the point where it's like, okay, wait a minute, let's get what I need to get done, done. Right. But if I want to move to the next level, and of course, this is also part of the science of getting rich. Yes. You know, you have to you have to take care of yourself. That's the most important thing. Do what you need to do to survive. But if you have a calling, if you have something that's you know that that itch or that niche that you want to scratch, as as I've heard it in the past, then work on that as well, and then get it to the point which you have also shared so that you can walk away from what your main income is and then do what you love, but you've got to master the mundane to get to that next level. You've got to take that chance. Right. And, you know, uh, a lot of people, they, they use inspiration from others. I mean, how many people have you inspired Robert when you think about it? I mean, okay. <laughs> in addition to, and I'm, I'm going to say this. Yes, you have 67 millionaires that you have helped to become millionaires. Or sh I should say 67 people that you have helped to become millionaires. But even more, the people who you have inspired to do things better, whether they became millionaires or not. And that is an inspiration for me, at least. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because, I, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you look at the person where they are and you want to help them to get to the next level, whatever that inspiration is, whether it is to become a millionaire or whether it is to become a better person than where they were. Right. And that to me is, I mean, that's one of the inspirations I will say that I have that you are one of my mentors, one of the people who has inspired Aww. me Thank and you. I can honestly, I will say even for Melody Riba, and right. definitely uh, you're number 55 millionaire. <laughs> I mean, uh, so yeah, but it's people who lead by example. Yeah. And who take what they've known. And again, part of your teachings, part of what you've shared, you can only take people as far as where you are right now but you have such a, a vast experience of doing that, that, uh, you know, it's like, okay, who do you want to follow? Well, success leaves clues, right? Documentation beats conversation. I mean, so many things point to a direction of, um, people of being inspired. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to just say it right now. First person who inspires me, you, Thank you. Thank you. And it, it's funny because I wasn't looking for that, you know, it's, 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 uh, but, but thank you very much. That's, that's very, very, very humbling. I, I am the guy that, um, you know, I never look at myself as being special, um, or, or being above average. I just know that, that I constantly am inspired by people that are willing to just get consistent at something, you know, just better at something like, you know, the people that follow me, I'll talk about this guy that inspired me that, you know, he, he he's broke the Guinness book of world records for skipping a rock across water. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of people are going like, ah, I don't get it. I'd rather be around someone that does things above average than be around a bunch of people that are not even interested in doing anything above average. It's just mm -hmm. bizarre to me. Right. And so 
I really see this correlate with people because I'll ask them. There's two things that I love saying to people is one is even before you ask him, what do they want? Right. What, what, what do you want? Most people are embarrassed right. by saying, I don't know. I, I don't know. So another thing, a way of saying it that works really, really well is saying, listen, you know, and, and I, I brought this up to my wife, Terry today. So we we're taking this walk and I was saying, can I ask you a few questions? She goes, you know, you can, I, I'm just going like, well, they're sort of personal. And, and she goes, oh, oh, and I'm going like, okay. So I said, if someone was interviewing you, and ask you if there was a book, if there was a book that that brought up an aha moment moment for you, a thing where you know we call it a significant emotional event, C S E E, that that something that actually you that hit you on such an emotional level, you're no longer that person anymore. You no longer can think that way. And I'm not bragging here, but. I, I, for 37 years, once this hit me, the thought of me being either average or working a job for someone is never a thought. Never, ever, ever have I ever had a thought, holy crap, things are bad. I should go get a job. That's how much of a significant emotional event is. It's like, I'm no longer doing things the way that other people do them anymore. And so one of the things I did is I asked her if there's any book that did that for her. And she said, no, no. And I said, no chapters, no, nothing. She goes, no. And I said, okay, so here's another thought. I said, um, is there an individual, a single individual that has inspired you or made that moment happen for you? No. Don't you guys find this very interesting? Yeah. Yeah. I where this continues to go. Yeah. And so then I, then the only other thing that I can think of is, is when I ask people who inspires you or who has inspired you, right? For my wife, that would be nobody. Nobody or nothing. And I want, and she knew that she could ask me that. I mean, that I would answer that question and regardless of what she said, she wouldn't be judged. She knows that about me. But for people that know my wife, she's very, very, very um, honest. She's yes. not going to say something. She's not going to bullshit. She's not going to say anything. And so after we shared that and she said, is there a reason that you brought that up? And I said, no, they're, they're, I'm just thinking about you know, me and Matt and, and Craig will have our, the visionaries will have a podcast. And um, I would rather a person tell me that nothing inspires them or they've never been inspired than bullshit me. See, I can't help. I can't help someone that that is good at lying to themselves or a professional. Now, let's be brutally honest for just one millisecond. I... I felt sort of like, um, ah, uh, you know what I mean? I just wish she had somebody or had something that inspired her. And then my mind thought a little bit that well, I'm not that person for her. And my mind's going like, wow, we've been around each other for 40 years and I'm not bragging, but I pulled off some pretty cool shit. but she's not inspired by that. So some people might go, wow, I, I really relate to your, your wife, Terry, because if someone pinned me down and, and made me answer those questions, they could very possibly be, I, you know, right now in my life, no one's really inspired me to be something better than I am. And, um, you know, that, that, that's just it. Now, before we go on, here's another thing is I think that a lot of people, including myself and possibly Matt, I'll let Matt speak for himself. Um, but you know, I know even when we have her on guests on the inner circle or the imaginator that people 
people are inspired by her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So does it, does it have to do with anything that she's done? If that's a question, <laughs> if that's a question to be answered, it, I, I, if I may answer it a little no, bit. No, no. That's what I think is crazy that. Yeah. She it's a quiet be, confidence. She, she, what would be the, because I know Matt Stun and Craig, you too, you know, we're all looking for that magic spot, that magic yes. click. Right. And so imagine being inspired by people being inspired by you but you're not inspired by anyone or anything. You're just living your best life, but everyone's perception of how you're living is something they wish they had. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that that's actually like one of the, the keys of it all is like it. It's interesting that you bring that up because like the older and the more wiser I feel like I'm becoming, the more I'm becoming aware. And, you know, it's interesting because I remember back there's this one speech that I remember back to, and it's not that it like resonates with me, but I just remember it. And I remember um, Matthew McConaughey getting his Oscar, right, for Dallas right. Buyers Club. And he did his speech and he's like, my hero is me 10 years from now or some shit like that is what he said. And people were dogging on him for it because they're like, what do you mean? And it's like, no, he he envisions himself in a sense that he'll accomplish more things and the hero of, of the future is himself. And it's interesting because as you start to grow, you can say this person's my hero or that person's my hero. And even the other day, I didn't send this to you, dad. I meant to, but I forgot. Um, but it was, it had uh, Tom Brady and he was like in front of this whole group and this young kid asked him. No, yeah, you was. sent it to me. Oh, okay. So I did send it to you. And he breaks down a little bit and says that his dad's his hero, right? And it's it's interesting because I feel like no matter no matter what it who inspires you or or who you're following in that current moment says more about you than it does about the person that you're following. No doubt. No and that's something doubt. that's that's interesting, right? Like so even when you bring up mom and you say that stuff. It, that does come from that quiet confidence, right? Yeah. And it does come from that place of like laid backness. And it's interesting because even when I brought up Matthew McConaughey and I read his book, right, or listened to it, um, he's exuded that quiet confidence like his whole life. You know what I mean? Like that, hey, I'm relaxed. I'm just here going with the flow kind of thing. Um, I I would love to exude that more. So it's it's right. interesting because it's like, well... In certain times in my life, I think that I've had I've had different different people that I've looked up to and have inspired me. I mean, the how to trust yourself video that you did, Dad, a while back, like really inspired me a lot. Wow. Too. And of course you inspire me. You're my father. So like it's gonna be <laughs> in my list no matter what. But um that i, appreciate I just that, wanted to pick you, something you, specific you, you, you lately inspire me too you, you outside of our me. outside of our private conversations which we had just the other day that was very right. on father's day you had a talk with me that really inspired me and got me back on track to what i want to be doing right and but that video in particular like i i think anyone that's watching this like if, even if you've seen it already like just go back and watch it again because I think every single time I fall out of whack and I feel more anxious or I feel more stressed or less inspired, it's always because I'm no longer trusting myself that everything will be okay. Right? So true. And, and so like we even, bring this up, Matt. Yeah. We bring this up and I want you to continue on that. Um, your mother um, has no need within herself to feel like she needs to be inspired by others. Well, also too, like we would, it, we would, I that, love the, what you said earlier. The, yeah. Isn't that the sweet spot? It is. I mm -hmm. love what you said earlier, which is like, um, you know, no bullshit. Give me an honest answer. If right. it's nobody that that's an interesting thing because a lot of people i think even if they're in like the most uninspired spot in their lives will give you some bullshit answer 
even yeah. though that is ap- just because like i think e- especially like in our culture and shit it's so easy just to say something that makes the conversation easier than being like ah eh, no one fucking inspires me right now because if you said that then maybe the person that's in your life that is inspired by somebody might go, well, this is who's inspiring me or this is interesting to me and share with you. Right. And sometimes we just don't want that, right? Like, especially in that mood. But I I think it all comes back to trusting yourself. Like, it really yeah. does. Even in who you're, who you're inspired by, right? So Right. So, so you know, like in my, my later days, uh, you know, I was really, really, really super inspired by by you know people that i've always wanted to be around you know what i mean so i always thought god the dream was you know uh not wait for six races a year uh in glendive montana uh for drag racing when i could go to california and race every weekend um right believe it or not there's places where you can race two or three times a night now you know i mean two or three times a, a week now you know what i mean so you, you you sit there and you say, well, no wonder, you know, some of the best drivers came out of that that area because a lot of people don't realize that California, you know, the 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 um, county of L.A., L.A. County has 77 cities that average over 130,000 people per city. And so people look at that mass population, but they don't realize how many small tracks are in each and one of those places. I mean, so you never leave a county and you could pretty much race every night of the week if you wanted to and even new tracks. What a, what a it's got an unfair advantage. So <laughs> I wanted I wanted to be there. I wanted to be around this unfair advantage of people that could basically um, uh, what would be, uh, you know, just totally immerse themselves in a world of what they want to be great at. Right. Mm-hmm. And so. What I think a lot of people don't realize is let's say they decide that they want to be an entrepreneur or they want to build a YouTube channel or they want to do whatever. Um, they're probably misunderstanding that that they're not looking to be in a culture or community of like minded people that really are not very happy with yesterday. <laughs> and right. and they're their discipline and their consistency of mastering the mundane just you just become who you hang around you know me and matt we're talking about this is like you know when you're around people that are constantly doing projects and doing the next things so you know people get involved in this company and then they immediately go out or this industry and they go try to build a youtube channel or build a a people business and they don't realize that they're 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 not inspired and then every day, all day, they talk to other people that are also not inspired that don't know what they want. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, it's interesting because you even bring up like when you talk about you become who you hang around and shit like I, I, we had like a heart to heart conversation. And I'm like, I just feel like I'm back to like teaching again and not creating. And I don't feel like right. that's what I'm meant to do. I'm, I feel like I'm meant to lead and meant to create like that's what I'm meant to do. Right. And so since that's the case, it's like, am I back in just teaching mode? Is this why I feel like so uneasy again? And it's like, absolutely. You're teaching people more. You're not in the community collaborating with other creatives anymore. You're just teaching people what to do with right. it. And it's not. And so it's like, all right, get it back in tune with yourself. And then, of course, like the next day after that conversation, I'm like, here's a scene from the the. <laughs> Sower's tale. It's already oh, yeah. because that comes from that place, right? And how great does right. it feel to like not just but it 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 um it reverberates through everything I do, even the work stuff that we're doing together, right? I'm more creative in that space now because I feel more comfortable and trust myself with where I'm going creatively right. with what I'm doing. Instead of going, Oh, well, maybe it's this or maybe it's that, second guessing constantly what it might be. And it's like, oh, I feel so great when I'm in that leader confidence creative role like that's just where i feel the most at home so yeah um, and and we're we're some of the emptiness matt thank you for sharing it so where i think some of this emptiness comes from is when you're constantly all day every day looking for inspiration yeah i'm looking for inspiration and 
and all kinds of stories, every mm -hmm. kind of little story. It can be a, a child story. It can be, I'm, I'm constantly got my radar out there looking for people that just believed in their self this much and what they created inspires the shit out of me. So if I'm one of those people constantly looking for that, while other people are like looking for, and please listen to this. Um, if you're the kind of person that if you were asked, I don't know quite what I want and I don't know what inspires me or I don't know the people, I don't have anyone that inspires me right now. You know, I need you to understand that you're unique and there's nothing wrong with your uniqueness. I don't believe that everyone should be the kind of people that are obsessively inspired by people constantly looking for that and plugging into that consistently on a day-to-day -day basis, being in this thing called Kaizen, never ending improvement. Um, not everyone can be there and nor should they be. So I brought that up so that you guys can hear the story of me and my wife going back and forth, having a very intimate conversation. And I, and I bet you that every one of you would have got her answers wrong about her. Right? So now on a scale to one to 10, she's not here to defend herself, but on a scale to one to 10, I don't, you know, I, I feel sorry for other people. There's no way that you can be, this supportive and loving uh, spouse as she's been. But because I'm unique, she was uniquely created for me. That wasn't the way it was when we first met. Yeah, because you grow, someone, right. Because someone was still clueless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm clueless I went through my own growth on, on myself. what to do with this <laughs> gift that God right. gave me. And, and, or whatever the, you know, the, the master creator gave me. So my thing is, is like, think about this. A lot of people will watch this and they believe that that person that's there, that's a solid rock being the most amazing person that they can be is what you really need. She's, she's my rock. I remember one time that when my mentor met my wife, she wasn't my wife at the time. And he got done talking to her and she would, I, I first got, she needed to go someplace or go to the bathroom or something. She walked off and he just started giggling and laughing. I get, I go, what? And he goes, wow, that's the string on the helium balloon. And I went, what? And he goes, oh man, you, you're, he said, you're a fucking helium balloon, man. You're, you know, <laughs> the wind's up there and fucking whipping it around and, Every day, all day, you're pulling against a string, wanting to go to a little higher height. Let's fucking go. <laughs> let, let, let's go. We're doing something. And she's the, she's the person, the anchor that's holding the string on the helium balloon. And um, so makes me emotional to say that. So, you know, on a scale to one to 10, she's uniquely there for me. But I also know how good of a mom she is. I know oh, how incredible. also how good of a bonus mom she's been to my elder son. I also know how good of a daughter she is, a sister that she is. And so you, you find a way to not be full of shit and accidentally slip into that lady's center circle. You'll never find a better friend in your fucking life. Yeah. She's been friends with the same person. Jolie, which introduced you guys since she was in like what first grade right so yeah so here's Incredible. where i want to close that the, so you're looking at two people that you know hey you know hey robert what inspired you today i'll give you some shit right and what inspired me yesterday what inspired me last night so i'm that helium balloon right and then amongst that you guys look at at my wife and just know that there's the yin and the yang. There's there's the yin and the yang, right? So in in my situation, I just want you to know that does that mean that uh, you you never are going to gain the dreams that you want or the imagination that you have? No, because I remember when I got involved in MDC and we blew up the ranks that. I got a lot of calls from people that were very, very upset and pissed off at me. 
And they're like, well, why didn't you let me know that you're going to get back in the industry? I know the owners of this company really well. They would have wrote you a million dollar, two million dollar check that come over. And it's like I, I said, my thoughts have not changed. And I said, you guys messed up. And they go, how did we mess up? You should have talked to my wife. Because my wife was uh, wanting more. So if you would have called her, then she would have told me and Matt what we were doing next. <laughs> right. yeah. Now, if she didn't do it, she's a little smarter than the average bear. I haven't said that in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but she simply asked Matt and I to help her with her business. And because of the person that she's been to us, the answer was yes, and we'll do it now. And yeah. we'll put in as much effort as we possibly can. And so I think that you guys are probably hearing some unique dynamics that I bet you you wouldn't wouldn't deal. You know, if you ask my wife how many people that she reaches out to a day-to-day -day basis talking about an opportunity to uh, supplement or replace your income, uh, that that that's a small number. That's a very small number because that's not what inspires her. Right. No. And, and I think, too, it's like really interesting because like when most I don't know when most people um, like have a hard time finding themselves, too. It's always really, really great to have somebody like a spouse to like recenter you and who you are. Or, you know, if you're as fortunate as I am, family. Right. To recenter you and to go like, hey, listen, like this is the path you're supposed to be on, like. Stop getting off your fucking path, dude. And it, but it's, but it's the truth though, because it all is. of us have this, all of us have this, like, um, going back to like trusting yourself and being inspired. All of us have this element of ourselves that in the back of our mind believes that we're making the wrong decision, even if it's our decision. Right. Oh, if anything, it's like, especially if it's our decision sometimes yeah. where it's like, again, mm -hmm. again, trust almost yourself. uncomfortable. Right. Yes. Trusting yourself. So you like put yourself in this situation where um, where you actually feel comfortable and then you're second guessing it. And how great is it then to turn around and have like a support network of people going, no, like this is who you are. Keep going. You know what yeah. I mean? And mm -hmm. like, I think even through the process of, of me and you working together, dad, like I've learned so much more in how to support you and being what you want to be and who you are through that process, involving myself less in that process, being right. more of a support network like you have been for me and stuff instead. And it's like the, the wake up call that that's been to not only being a leader, but to like supporting the other people in my life, because one of the things that took me a while to learn and I learned really from you is like to just let people be who they are where they are it I always had that leader aspect of my mind where I'm like if you just did this little bit more right if you just went this route you'd get what you want and it would be better and it was like for whatever reason it took me a while to realize that I could draw the whole entire map out for somebody the battle plan so to speak and they're going to go, nah, not my battle. Not no, not the way I mm -hmm. would do it, you know? And it took me a while to not be frustrated by that, but even like take steps back and go, why the fuck am I even going into building battle plan mode? I'm not in, I, my goal is to sit down with somebody and I've learned this from you, but sit down with them and figure out what their battle plans are and help them right. draw it. Maybe they've never even drawn it before. Mm -hmm. Maybe they haven't thought about it in a long time. And I've seen you do this so many times. I know even going on this trip, there's going to be people there that are going to be on the trip that you're probably going to inspire and do this with. But that's something that constantly inspires me too with working with other people and trying to be in that leader roles it's like not only how can i be a leader so i can be creative and you can help me build the ideas that i have but how can i be supportive and servicing the ideas that you have the things that you want right. to accomplish and create how much better of a leader does that make me like well I, i'll give you greatly. i'll give you it my, gives me more confidence in myself i'll tell you that that things will well, go well it, yeah, even instead of saying the word leader, you know what I mean? One of the things yes. that I think that we've all done 
uh, all done is again, we consider using words to communicate with another human being when we know that each and every individual has a different perception or a different description of that word. It, it's mind boggling to us how far we are. And, and like, so my wife said recently, and we bring bringing this up on other calls is she's asked me, please stop using the word leader. And she says, not everyone's a leader. You just look at them and they don't have a following. So, but my wife's not a leader. Does that mean that a person that doesn't have a following and is not a leader can still can have an impact in the world? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, every person out there, even though I talked about these two young guys that, you know, won, won their first world championship, uh, I know I'm going to say something that's going to upset a lot of people, but each one of them have a mother and a father. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so what if you're just known as Michael Phelps' mom? You, you, you know what I mean? There, there becomes these groups of people out there that, um, yeah, they haven't done much with their life. They're just the parents of Albert Einstein. They're just <laughs> no right. Uh, that is that is a huge aspect of it. Like I, like I've even thought, you know, lately especially dad because we've been having such great father son conversations as well yeah we have um it's it's like it's interesting because i'm like holy shit what if one day i have a son that talks to me like me and my dad talk what I, like i'm actually starting to envision the roles being the other direction like me being the one that's trying to help them out me being the one that's trying to understand where they're coming from and what they want and all these things like that and it's like, uh, it's, it's just interesting because you always think about this inspiring person showing up in your life and like changing right. your life, whether you fall in love or whether um, you meet somebody, great business partner at the right time, right place or something like that. Um, but then we like completely forget about the growth of our, the people that surround us and as they grow with us. And the fact that me and you are here and like we can bounce ideas off of one another. I'm like even more excited at some point to make another person to join this conversation well, with us. Mm -hmm. But you know well, what I mean? Well, That's what I think yeah. of more because it's, well, it's like, everything. well, it's honestly everything because I know that, you know, Matt and I being as close as we are, but also father and son, I know sometimes he'll reach out to me going, Hey, you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, what can I do for you today? He'll say, or, you know, what's going on. And, and I'll just reach out to him and he says like, you know, well, what can I do for you? And I said, I need, I, I just, uh, I just want you to be really excited and happy about your future that you're creating. You know what I mean? And I know that some of us might go through life going, you know, that isn't any direction that, that like, you know, I was looking for a direction. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, no, because, you know, Craig and I are, 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 I consider Craig family. We're like, you know, close. Well, he's definitely closer to any brother I have ever had. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's mutual. And, and so sometimes I'll, I'll stretch Craig's comfort zone. Yes. <laughs> and, and cause I love him and I, I want him to have what he wants in life. And when I try to stretch that comfort zone, the one thing that I find out about Craig, and you guys are going to find this really interesting, by the way, is that Craig and I are uniquely different and we don't have the same imagination and goals. I would say that's similar me and you even like it's and that's OK. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's OK. So right. I'll reach out to Craig and go, you do know how easy this is, don't you? And Craig's like, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do. You know, I'm here to help you. You're always there to help me. All right. So what's going on in your life? Um, I'm really excited about this new agent, this new manager, and this addition that I have coming up. See, that's, that's me loving and supporting him, not asking him to do what I think he should do or what I would like him to do. <laughs> yeah. but see, that's an inspiration unto itself because you respect and this is what i was kind of going to bring into this is Please. uh inspiration is not necessarily uh 
have, like you said earlier, you may not be inspired right now, but if you surround yourself with the right people, you become who you hang around. That inspiration alone could be what will take you to the next level. Right. And uh, so, for example, you know, maybe we're trying to find that one thing that everybody wants. Maybe right. we're trying too hard to be inspired by something or someone and we're just not letting it happen to wise us. wise yeah. words because i think it's interesting when you when you're dealing with shit i think you nailed it nailed when you're it. dealing with shit it's so hard to like force yourself to be inspired by stuff so you're like i'm putting myself in front of it but why am i not feeling yeah. a certain way right exactly and abraham hicks talks about that Yep. And right. uh, we, we kind of brought that up in the last podcast about, OK, you know, maybe you're pushing in the wrong direction, even though supposedly it's the right direction. And you just got to step back, so take a moment. And here's where meditation sometimes is really, really good, because if you can shut off everything around you. And just let whatever comes into your mind come in and then okay is this something that i can do is this something that maybe i let me put that on the burner here and see where it is sometimes people are not inspired uh emotionally boom right away right and so they've got to kind of look look at it and and okay robert yes uh i think you know in a sense you go Auto, you go pretty quick into doing things. Now, maybe that is also because of the experiences that you've had up to this point, and you know specifically, but there are a lot of people who don't. They right. don't take that inspired, heartful, emotional uh, point that they're at right now. And so they all of a sudden start to think about it more. And right. because that's the way that they were raised. So they don't trust the heart more than they trust the head. And yet at the same time, there are people who trust more of the heart than the head. And it, it's got to be that balance because sometimes your balance, your balance. And that's not, right. not that, somebody else's balance. No, no, no. That's exactly. That's your part balance. is figuring out it has like, to be what your, that is what, for you, for sure. And that goes mm. back to the last podcast of what do you believe? Right. It's true. And yeah. Yeah, I, I, and I again, thought, how to trust I, I, yourself. I, I just thought of the scene that probably everyone's seen, but it's that uh, scene where in in one of the Rockies, you know, where he can't out, he can't see out of either one of his eyes. You know what I mean? And he's screaming in his screaming in the in the ring for his wife, Adrian, mm -hmm. and yeah. everybody that can see that scene can just go all right, this is emotionally messing me up unless, you know, you're, that's not your kind of deal. But it was like, now that the, now that the fight is over, all I need to be is around the people that got me here. I, I don't, you know, so. And who did he fight for? Who was his inspiration? Yeah. And, and everyone looked at her as being nobody. And it's like, you know, except hey, him, you know, yeah. yeah. And yeah, so no, I see Hannah, my wife hadn't seen the movie. Um, so a while back we watched it, right? And it's always a reminder every time I watch Rocky that it's it's like such a multi-layered film. And everybody that's mm -hmm. ever heard of the film goes, It's a boxing movie. I'm not into those kinds of films. Right. And so you immediately like discount it as some sports movie I'm not gonna watch. When in reality, like the boxing is like eight, ten percent <laughs> of the film. Like the final bit, like obviously boxing, he's training. The boxing, the boxing in the film is be, is just one thing and one thing only. It's 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 a correlation of how we have to go through this thing called fucking life. It's the overall, <laughs> yeah. It's what the, Growth, the yeah. is for the overall arc of the film because if right. you take it from beginning to end, here's a nobody who's just some lug who likes to go to a boxing uh, gym. And all of a sudden he gets inspired. Well, no, he, he didn't get inspired. If you remember the thing that, that they're, they're going, why don't we give this, why don't we give a rags the richest story? Exactly. You know, really yeah. it was just a marketing campaign 
that why don't we just give some loser a shot? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, Adonis <laughs> Creed wanted to give somebody a shot. And, yeah. and they pick him as the loser. And it's like, why? Wow, the Italian I stallion. I don't know right. if I'm ever going to get this shot again. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a classic underdog story. But like at the same time, I think what makes the film, look at how easy it is to talk movies. Uh, <laughs> what makes the film is like that that heart of, of Rocky and the character of Rocky and his love or seeing Adrian for the way that he does, like her, her brother makes fun of her. Everybody calls her like stupid or useless and stuff. Except him, he's constantly there telling her how pretty she is, how nice she is, how cool she is. And you see like that progression of their relationships through the films and stuff like that. But it just goes to show like how she just how she just blooms throughout the absolutely movie, you know into mean? her own strong character. You know what I and, mean? And, like uh, you know and by the time whatever one ends as she goes through that i just love that again it shows people that have incredible um you know abilities to encourage and make other people believe in themselves that are you know that be, everyone's looking at the heroes but no one's thinking about the family and the people that are wrapped around them that 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 believed in them and said hey listen you can do this and and uh you know, that that's another part of inspiration. You know, the whole title for today is, you know, what inspires you? And I just really, really came to grips that I'm learning. And this again, I, I'm really finding I will find the right way to express these feelings that I've had for the last year or so. And, and, and it's because if you're trying to build a team of people that want to quit their job and make six figures a year. It, it's very, it becomes very apparent to you very, very quickly that you sometimes attract the people that you are. And if you don't know what you want and you're not inspired and you're not that kind of person that strives to be inspired. See, I think a lot of people get involved in home-based businesses and entrepreneurship because look at the lifestyle look at the fucking dream look at the life that you fucking who, who doesn't want my life are you kidding me you know it, and it's like uh but i'm just not going to do anything that robert does well it's hard to hard to get the uniqueness of my life that was uniquely created for me and and i do the things that are uniquely created for me to do to create this 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 lifestyle this this for other people um um what is the word where a mirage mm. you know it's, it's mm -hmm. just an illusion to them and isn't that the story i wanted to bring this up because that's what no one wants to do no one wants to look at someone's inspire if you're not the kind of person that is consistently looking for inspirational stories so that you can at least dive into them and find out what the whole um, the whole story of the story is because, you know, Matt shared with me a lot of stories and so have Craig of people that inspired them. And what, what, what I love most about an inspirational individual is all the shit they had to go through to get to where they are. The hero's journey. And so that's when people go, Oh, I'd love to have that lifestyle, but I ain't doing that. That's, a, I, that's so true. Nothing yeah. that excites me. Nothing excites me to reach out to a stranger and share with them something that inspired me. Nothing. Well, if it's not yours, then why would you beat the shit out of yourself every day for doing something that someone not doing the stuff that was uniquely not uniquely designed for you, <laughs> but was uniquely designed for somebody else? Because we all do this every day, don't we? We go, like, like Craig brought it up. It's like, oh, my God, did you hear so-and-so is fighting? Or did you hear there's, you know, the fourth game of the NBA final playoffs? <clears throat> um, I could give a shit. <laughs> I do not know. And then Matt reaches out and says a name that, you know, I, I don't want to ever have Matt feel like, his interests are not what mine is, but <laughs> I know that say, they're not. <laughs> yeah, he'll say I'm a director's unaware. name, 
He'll say a director's name. He'll find out about a screenplay that everyone's been working on for, you know, 70 fucking years. And all these best people are all combined together to make this happen. Powerhouse. And oh, by the way, Dad, didn't you know this director and this screenwriter did these other movies that I didn't go to? And <laughs> and Matt's looked fucking jacked out of his mind. I, exactly. It's the shit I think. It, well, it's interesting because it, it like ties in. <laughs> what you're saying ties in perfectly with what I was going to say, which is like, if you're not, and I've, I think I've said this before, but if you're not like thinking about this shit when you're not doing it, then odds are you're not that excited about it. Amen. Like, Say that again. If Say you're not thinking about this shit, death. like while you're sleeping or while you're before you go to bed or when you wake up, if you're not like thinking about this shit when you're not doing it, then you're not inspired enough. And I think right. when people, the one thing that I got from you that is incredible is I feel like I got your and Kyle did too and Junior as well. But like this, this engineer tinker mind where instead when I'm excited about something. I don't go towards it with like this worry that I'm going to make a mistake. I go at it right. with the excitement that I'm going to figure it out along the way. Gonna figure it out. And, Absolutely. And it's interesting because for the longest time I've wanted to learn music, right? Even to the point that one Christmas I asked for a uh, electric keyboard and I'm like, I'm going to learn music, right? Um, at least piano. So it's been sitting out in my living room for a long time. And so, um, lately I'm like, I would love to just actually get some hobby that has nothing to do with money, marketing, any of that shit like that. Just something I, I can figure out how to do and enjoy myself. And so I'm like, great, this is it. And so I, I asked chat GPT and I start searching and I'm like, what's the easiest way to learn sheet music, to read sheet music. And as I'm searching, it's like, oh, a lot of really major artists learn to play by ear. They actually can't read sheet music. And I'm like, what? The thing that stopped me from learning this for a long time was going, I have to sit down and learn a whole new, basically a language. whole new language. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's the reason why I kept myself from learning it. And then now going, oh, some of these artists that you love and respect, and it was similar with film. I was just more excited and it was younger. So it's like, oh, I have to go to film school. Nope, all the filmmakers you love didn't go. You know what I mean? If anything, they said the opposite about it. And so it's like, fuck, okay. Now I'm seeing piano as, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to learn to play the music that I've always wanted to play. I can learn to play it by ear. I can learn certain songs and what keys to play and all these things. But I don't have to sit down and learn like this whole back end part of the information that I was honestly keeping myself from starting because I thought that that was part of the process, right? My brother plays bass. Does he know how to read a note of music if I put a sheet, a sheet music in front of him? No. Yeah, and apparently and that's a lot of he people. Is very good. He just, in fact, he just shared with me an album he's working on. It's yeah. punk. It's not my style of music, but you know what? It, I can hear it for what it is. And I can hear that he is the foundation to this band and that he is doing a really good job at holding it down, being the bass player. I have to admire that in him. Uh, the same way, Matt is he doesn't know a lick of notes. I can mm -hmm. look on a staff and I can read the notes but he is actually playing it because he loves doing it. Well, I was going to say one last thing about that point too, Craig, is it's like when I talked a second ago and said, right, like if you're not dreaming about it or thinking about it, the reason that that didn't come to terms for me like it did for your brother is I don't think and dream about playing piano. It's just something that I've wanted to do in my life. So right. now it's like, well, if I thought and dreamed about playing piano i probably would have picked up a piano early on and just started clicking the keys like i do with mm -hmm. editing and the other things that i enjoy in my life because i would have been excited about learning it and i think that that's that's such a huge key that we forget right like what we're excited well, about that, and think about that, it, so those those little thoughts in our minds you know the whisper all, right you yep. know all, all, there he all, is yeah rawr, it's like, rawr, rawr. It's like <laughs> We, we mentally don't know that we don't know. So then what we do is we, we don't trust ourselves and we come up with a bunch of steps to where we need to go. That's really not there. Barriers. It, it, Honestly, they're like hurdles. And I've, yeah. I, 
I'm realizing I do this with a lot of shit that I want to do in life, right? Yeah. If it's not something that I'm excited about, is say it's just something I've wanted to do, like exercise, I'll like add like hurdles in between me exercising. Yeah. So then it's like, yeah. well, of course I got to get work done before. It's like, no, you could wake up and get. I got to do this. I got to do that. Right, I got to yeah. do this. Procrastinate. Put it off. You know, I, I'm, I'm. I don't I'm dream about exercise right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like so. I'm trying to put. I'm trying to focus on some uh, on an audition. And then it's like, okay, I, I, I got to step away for a moment. So I push the button to, to watch a, a short. Then I push the button to watch the next short. Then the next right. short. Then the next <laughs> short. Then, damn, I got that audition I got to work on right now. Yeah. Mm. And, and you, you pull, you physically got to pull yourself away. But it's, you know, what it, it is, is too, is, okay, not only just who inspires you, but what inspires you, like you've said, Robert. It's like, do I really want to get caught up in this? loop of one minute shorts or do i want to get things done right inspire I mean, I, me I, I, how i get inspired to do stuff is again you know it's uh when i can help other people dream i'll notice that a lot of times for me i trick myself because what i'll do is the things that i know that would inspire me to do where i want to go are stuff that i procrastinate on in the other words, though, if there was something I, I needed to do to help somebody else get where they want to go, then I'll drop everything and I'll get it knocked out. And it's like, but I'm still a good procrastinator. I, I a lot of people don't realize that, uh, you know, if you really look at people that that, you know, and maybe you find no one inspiring. But the people that inspire me is when you find out how many other things this person can do. You know what I mean? So you hear people like uh, a Steve Martin, you know what I mean? And of course, I'm really telling my age here, you know, and but you look at like uh, all the stuff that, you know, Beverly Hills uh, Cop 3, I think, is coming out, you know, like Eddie and, Murphy, and Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. And you see people like this that just do everything amazing. Well, didn't you share? Or is it my you know I mean? They just like they're just like. Oh, they do this, they do that, they do this. So, yeah. you know, Steve Martin, good at telling jokes. He's also a good juggler. He's also, it's like, so. Plays in a band. Yeah. So I yeah, always tell actor. people, if you look at people that are good at multiple things, it's because they're good because the majority of the people, and I'm going to be bold here, you know, it's, it's way above 90%, are people that don't really want to get above average at anything. So if you're just a little bit better at playing banjo or you just can juggle three balls for one minute, you really don't. And, and that's something that inspired me because when I was young uh, and the first time that I went to a racetrack, it was instantly I see two cars run down and one guy gets his number wiped off his window means he lost the race and the other person gets back in line to race the next person. Well, the win, the, 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 the difference between winning and losing was less than tenths or a hundredths of a second. <laughs> and it was like, it was like, I got this. I got this. I build a car and they put me in categories that are people that are competitive me with that. And now I just have to get gooder. All I got to do is get gooder. You know what I mean? And then the focus is driving's being gooder, but then you got to be a good, better good mechanic, a better engineer. What if my car produced more horsepower? What if my car, you know, hooked up, you know, faster than the other car? And it was just all these little things that made me realize before I had any mentor that it really doesn't take much to be above average because a majority of the people don't trust themselves. They don't believe in themselves. They're, they're not inspired. They don't have anything that inspires them, you know? And so going back to Terry, before we close this off, is that if I ask my wife, what she, what, what does she love to watch? She loves watching people that live in some really nice fucking areas. Like the, uh, the housewife shows and stuff. <laughs> So, you know, if they, you know, her favorite ones is watching, you know, Housewives of Orange County or Beverly Hills. And she also loves watching these below deck, you know, things 
because it's like, wow, we're going to put down the anchor and here we are in Greece. And, you know, you're looking at all these homes and then the sun, you know, the sun sets and the sun rises and you're looking at this stuff and you're just like, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm worried. I'm, uh, you know, the, the Cabo trip, that will be fun. I'm worried when you guys come back from the Greece trip that you'll look at, you'll be like, I guess here? where I'm going to move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, Makonos, it, it, here we come. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted every one of you, and this is more of a mastermind, you know, I always love podcasts because we, I, you know, if anybody thinks I know it all, the, I, I, you're, you're madly, madly way off base. I, I, I just know that I don't know. And so what I'm constantly trying to figure out, and here's a quick question. I think you, if you guys don't mind, I'd like you to, uh, I got to get going. I got a, another zoom to jump on, but I wanted you guys to think about this. Okay. So let's say that you're a person that were asked the questions that Terry was asked, right? Mm -hmm. Name something or a number of books that have inspired you name a person that inspired you name something that inspires you. And you just say, no, now there, there's there's nothing out there because what i see he see a lot of people again is the goal here is not to lie to yourself all right so are you pretending to be excited and and, and pretending to be inspired doing things that are not uniquely de designed and created for you and that's why you procrastinate and that's why you suck so bad because there's 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 you think of all the things I procrastinate because I don't want to do something because it's not me and I don't want to do it. And even if I did do it, I don't believe myself and I don't trust myself. So I know I'm going to fucking suck at it. And, and you got someone like me that's just telling you, man, you know, I watched a dude skipping rocks and I'm fucking jacked out of my mind. <laughs> and, and you're probably going, maybe this guy is just a little weirder than me. Maybe he just fits in a different category that makes him Robert Hollis. No, you know, no one created another one. And it's like, that's okay. So what's going to make you have a fulfilling life? What's going to make you have, you know, the five areas of the life that we talk about, you know, what's going to make you love and love yourself and believe in yourself more. What's going to make you an individual that's more connected to the people that really you care the most about? How much money really, really do you need to achieve, if any, to get to some of these goals? Because I think that a lot of people are just constantly hanging around and trying to do what other people is. But if you really ask them if that individual they're following inspires them, they might be inspired like I am. I'm inspired by people that that do things that others don't. It doesn't mean that I want to learn how to stack, pl stack plastic, plastic cups. It doesn't mean that I'm going to go throw my shoulder out trying to be a good rock skipper. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you guys are going to laugh at me when I say this, but I'm not, not really interested in trying to figure out how to be in the NBA. Uh, so now... <laughs> Guess what? Now we're at this place is do, do you need to be excited? Do you need to be inspired? Do you need to have uh, an imagination that you visually can see that, you know, really shakes you on an emotional level? Um, who are you? Who, who are you? What excites you? What inspires you? Because now I'm saying this to my youngest son, Kyle. It's like, I wanted to be for my boys, which I feel you could be for the people that are around you, is really, really challenge them on finding out what really makes them click. And also be, un in, it be there for them that if they try something and that's not it, that who gives a shit? You know, find something else that, that, that gets you excited and inspired, like Matt says, when you're... And, and I, I, I do have one thing to say. I always tell people all the time that you know where this spot is. Because that spot is, you know, you meet somebody new. And when you meet somebody new, your imagination takes off. 
And when your imagination takes off and you can't stop thinking about this person, all your thoughts of what you're, what you're going to do and how much fun and the memories you're going to create when you see them again. And when you're done seeing them and they go their way, all your thoughts are totally obsessed with when you're going to see them again. Maybe some of you just forgot that if you got that person and now they're, they're with you and now you take them for granted, maybe, maybe you stopped imagining these incredible moments that you could cherish with that person. Because uh, it is funny how people will do things for others, but they won't do them for themselves. So that is the magic for me. That That is the magic for me. I tell Matt the lifestyle that him and Hannah have, the lifestyle that my wife and Kyle have, it, it's not them asking me to do it. I'm selfish. I'm extremely selfish in figuring out the people that I love the most, what I'd like to help them create what I'd like them to focus on, what I don't need them worried about. That's selfish. And I've told Matt and my wife this, listen, can you guys just tell me some neat experiences that you would like to have? So I would just go out and get them. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to I, I, myself, I'm starting to learn from that so much that like, I think, um, you know, I've learned a lot from you, obviously. I don't want to add anything because I think everything that you said was just right on the money. I just love right. and appreciate you, Dad. I, you inspire me. I know we're going to miss you over the next couple of days because you're going to be traveling with Mom to Cabo. So I hope you guys have a great time there. I'm looking Got forward it. to seeing all the pictures and everything. But oh, it's going to be it's going to be fun. And, uh, you know, I, I guess the question that I w did want to ask, though, Mm -hmm. on a mastermind before we close is um um maybe that's an ai question it's <laughs> like uh do does a person need to be excited and inspired to have a fulfilling life mm. Ooh, it's interesting because can you even ask an ai such a a human person to person question right that's like a very i feel like emotional. even even these even are the questions have, I right? ask. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Bill, Bill Gould, my mentor, said in my book, he said, hey, it's easy. It's only three steps. Three steps. One, get excited. And he used to say this as a joke. If you're not excited before you call people, run around your house a couple of times. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he goes, because then when you're calling people, your lack of breath will make them think you're excited about something. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But is there a group of people out there that not only are not interested in being expired, inspired, but also they're not interested in being excited? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the second step is after you're excited, you don't know how you're going to do it, but at least you're excited because you're an imagination. So now what you got to do is tell the world. All day, every day, every major corporation on the planet spent all their time making sure that other people knew they freaking existed. Right. So I know people that will watch this video and, you know, you can log into your online banking or log into your credit card and up in the upper right hand corner, it says, do you want to make hundred dollars? Refer this to your friends. And your first thought is, nah, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> but you know, maybe you should stop telling people that you need money. If you won't go, everything you log into has got a referral link and you go, fuck that. So I got excited because I imagine, and then all day with that excitement, I talk to strangers all day, every day. And what's number three? Number three is pay attention. Because the way that you'd be good at something is by finding someone that's already got evidence of doing it with others and just follow them. So Matt has watched me lie to myself and get excited going, I can compete with Tony Robbins. Never been to his seminars. Never gone to one live seminar. 
Well, I was going to say too, his zero, lifestyle, I, have, I feel like is. I have zero interest <clears throat> in learning from that guy. So then I'm going to start a seminar company and a, and a course company to compete against him when I don't like doing that shit. Didn't work good for me. Even no, when I we mean, made money, yeah. I was never, I was never happy. I was always stressed. I, I, me and Matt would, would draw out a perfect battle plan to, to knock it out of the park. And every day me and him would have conversations about absolutely nothing on how to get this plan done that neither one of us fucking wanted to do. So I, I, I'm bringing up all this like, stuff. It's, yeah. It's like being at war and, and you're not the one that started it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, like, so, uh, I have to so keep. So why did we do this? Why did we do this? We did this because we were pissed off at network marketing because of some people's stupid decisions. I don't want to call them out, Joven, but you know people like that. <laughs> and, and but now I look back and it's a silver lining, right? Because mm -hmm. I said I wasn't going to do that. Then I got into coaching, building a brand like Tony Robbins. Found out that that was not not my excitement, not my inspiration. Tony Robbins doesn't inspire me at all. Uh, Jim Rowan does. For style. See what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So I just thought I'd throw that out to you guys. And, and you know, I, I know I went for a while there, but, you know, what's your first thoughts on, on, um, is it only people that are inspired that are like winning at life? I, I did ask ChatGPT, and I even pu pulled it up on the screen so people can see it in the replay. I did ask if you have to be inspired to live a happy life, and it said no and gave a bunch of... It says, finding happiness without inspiration. Oh, this is the one time it doesn't want to load? One time, <laughs> I should say. Listen. Fiction and post. <laughs> listen, open AI. I'm one of those people that pays $20 a month and has for a long time. Why does this not work anymore? Or why does this work half the time that it used to? What the hell is going on? But anyway. I, it, I, it, I, I, I actually left it a message this morning saying, are you working today? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's like uh, the first and thing it realized is that humans work way too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. So Craig, it just what's said. Your, what's your ahead, last? Craig. Oh, go ahead, Matt. You did you did it pull up? Yeah, I did. I was going to say a person could certainly have a happy life without being constantly inspired, though inspiration often enhances the overall quality and fulfillment of life. Um, hold on. Let me switch over to to browser because like, here. Yeah, because like I said, you know, when you first meet somebody and you're in that, you know, for lack of better words, honeymoon, honeymoon place. You know what I mean? Right. Uh you're not excited and you're not inspired by the things that could possibly happen between you two during this, this courtship. I just find that hard to believe. I, I, it'd be weird for me. Well, to everybody goes because, through that in courtship, yeah. you know, some, you have to find out who's good for you and who's not good for you. Right. But we have to be willing to admit that there's a few people that might watch this video that still hasn't had that experience. Exactly. True. And they may be just as happy as to, to kind of bring in your, your, your question, like Terry, maybe nothing inspires them. Maybe they're happy where they are at and they're willing to just do what they want to do. That's on them. That's what, that's where their happy place is. That's where they're, yeah. they feel the best and they don't have to go out and do the things that other people think, feel, or desire that inspires them. They're, right. they're fine to be maybe, okay, writing uh, somebody's coattails, maybe helping somebody because they don't want to be in the spotlight. Uh, or maybe they just want to go from point A to B to Z, meaning your full life. And they just want to be able to live and experience what yeah. happens to them. And that is if you want to call it their inspiration, then fine. Right. But they don't met, need somebody to do that. Right. I met this guy in closing, you guys, that I, I, I've had two people like this. One is when I really got comfortable in network marketing. I remember going to the Sherman Oaks uh, Galleria in Sherman Oaks, California. 
And uh, I was going around looking for someone to talk about how great my business is, man. I'm jacked <laughs> out of my mind. And I'm talking to strangers all day, every day. And I walked up to this guy and he had the biggest smile on his face and he was whistling and he was uh, mopping the floor. And I walked up to him and I said, uh, hi. And he turns around and he was, uh, had broken English. He said, hello. And I, and I said, uh, I said, um, wow, it looks like you're happy. And he said, two days ago, I had my first child, a son. And he said, I've been married for a little over a year. And he goes, I worked my, my butt off to get to this country. And, and he says, and now my wife and I have a new baby boy. And he goes, I'm the happiest person you'll ever meet. And I went, uh, I know this might go against my mentor's beliefs, but I think I'm going to leave this dude alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if he's going to be happy forever or maybe he's still there. But, but I could immediately understand that in the fulfillment and and uh and how happy he was that i i, I needed to leave him alone i i just told him that i was happy for him and another one is i met this guy golly this one of the biggest human beings i've ever met uh and and he walked up and this guy says i want you to meet chuck thomas and i said okay and i said hi chuck how are you and he goes great and he goes uh i understand that you do very well at this business he says i want to learn how to do it and he says i think that i can figure it out and I go, uh, really? I said, what'd you do before this? And I was a football fan. Oh my God, I was a football fan. And he looked at me and he goes, oh, he says, I, uh, he says I, I, uh, I'm a four-time Super Bowl champion. And I went, Chuck Thomas. I'm looking at him, just totally embarrassed. And I go, well, who did you play for? And he said, uh, he said uh, the San Francisco 49ers. And I went, um, how would I know you? And he goes, well, every time Joe Montana uh, threw the ball, I gave it to him first. I'm Joe Montana's center. I hike him the ball. And I was like, you think about that guy and how great he was. And the one thing that he didn't have to worry about is getting the ball in his hands at the right time. And that guy made sure that no one touched him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, wow, you look how big this guy is. I mean, how many points or how famous Joe Montana is. And I bet you, you could walk up to a lot of people and go, who's Joe Montana's center? He goes, every ring that Joe Montana has got, I was a center. Now I was, I got chills right now. And it's like, so maybe part of your inspiration is just doing what you do good. That makes you fulfilled to help somebody else or the team get where they're going. Because if you're one of those people, I want to say thank you and how much I love and appreciate you for just being who you are constantly doing shit that you do every day that no one else wants to do. So Matt and Craig, <laughs> I think that's a perfect place to end it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> no, exactly. I, I agree. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. And thank you, dad. Craig, you bet. love and appreciate yep. you guys. Love and appreciate you, Matt, Robert. Wow. And ladies and gentlemen, you can follow Robert Hollis at roberthollis.com. Also, if you'd like to join our exclusive community, the inner circle, you can join us by going to roberthollis.com forward slash join to register. There's going to be lots of great exclusive content and you'll be able to participate in our special breakthrough sessions as part of the imaginators and inner circle to help you go to the next level. Please don't forget to like and share this video on YouTube and with others. It'll help our community grow and reach those with ears to hear. Guys, thank you. Bless you. Shout out to our executive producer and visionary, Matt Hollis. And of course, Robert Hollis. Wow. GPS to success and inspiration to many others. I'll say that at the, as we close. Uh, and thank you for joining us, for being here and taking time out of your busy schedule to be part of unlimited wisdom. My name is Craig A. Jackman. Please be good to yourselves. 
be cash. And until next time, bye for now. See everybody.